Welcome to the mountains. Areas like this are not a single biome, but rather a collection of biomes. We begin at the bottom of the mountains with whatever biome happens to be at the base. It may be a desert, rainforest, grassland, or even ocean. As you go up, the temperature begins to get cooler. For every thousand feet you get higher, the temperature falls about 3.6 degrees Fahrenheit. That adds up. If you have a 5,000 foot mountain, it might be 80 degrees at the bottom, but only 62 at the top. Now, if the mountains were even higher, say 13,000 feet, it would be cold enough for snow at the top, even though it's so warm down below. That means the combination of plants and animals that grow and survive at the different altitudes changes as you go up and down on mountains. Layers of different biomes follow one after the other as you climb higher. Here in Canada, you can clearly see the tree line. That's the point on the mountain where trees can no longer survive. At this point, the boreal forest of the subalpine part of the mountain gives way to alpine tundra towards the top. This is what the tree line looks like. You can see that plant life tends to get smaller as you go higher. The trees near the top of the mountain are very, very small. Their growing season is so short and conditions are so harsh that the trees don't get as tall as the ones even a little way further down. Welcome to the top of the mountain. What you see behind me is above the tree line leading toward the tops of the peaks there. And what happens is as you go higher, the plants get closer to the ground. Why is that? Well, because here the winters get more and more severe. This area is only free of snow a few months a year, and so these plants need to be very hardy to survive in those conditions, and they need to be quick to take advantage of the, the warm days like this one when they come. Eventually, as you get even higher, you reach the point where trees no longer survive. They give way to tiny plants and shrubs called alpine tundra. That's a kind of community that survives in an area that's only free of snow for a few months each year. Animals and birds must also be uniquely adapted to these harsh conditions. They must either migrate to get away from the cold, or hibernate, like these Colombian ground squirrels who sleep for eight months every winter. But for the brief summer on these mountains, the tundra blooms with flowers and berries, and it decorates the high peaks everywhere you look, providing a banquet for the animals, insects, and birds who can survive the long winters or journey here to enjoy it. Of course, not all mountains are so high, and many have trees growing all the way to the top, the highest mountains, however, like these in the Canadian Rockies, have layers of tundra and even some alpine glaciers which stay frozen during the summer. So this is called the Continental Divide. That hill down there points west. Any water that falls here falls toward the Pacific Ocean. But if I come this way, the hill down this way, the water drains to the Atlantic Ocean. That's the continental divide. If you pour water on this spot, part of it will flow to the Pacific, part of it will flow to the Atlantic. Up here in the Rockies, it's also the divider between two provinces, British Columbia on that side and Alberta behind me. So this is the continental divide in New Mexico. From this point, that direction, water flows west. It flows towards the Colorado River, towards the Sea of Cortez, and towards the Pacific Ocean. Now let's turn around and look this way. From here and down, water flows toward the Rio Grande, towards the Gulf of Mexico, and the Atlantic Ocean. That's what the Continental Divide is. Water shifts direction from here east and from this way west. How will climate change affect mountains? Let's start at the top of the highest peaks, where glaciers can be found all year long. 
These glaciers have a huge effect on climate overall. They keep these areas cooler than they would be without the glaciers. The glacier's snow melt during the spring and summer provides a steady source of fresh water all through even the summer months, which plants and animals rely on to survive. Glaciers affect everything that lives in the surrounding areas. Glaciers on mountains even affect lands far away, which rely on mountain streams that begin here for water for farms and people much further down the watershed. All over the world, glaciers like this one are melting as the climate warms. Elsewhere on the mountains, the different zones are changing. Forests grow higher up on the mountains, squeezing out the plants and animals of the tundra in some places. As mountains get drier during the summer months, wildfires are growing more common. Once trees are burned away or eaten by insects, the forest may not be able to grow again if the conditions are no longer right for them. Mountains like these are a delicate mix of biomes, many of which have been stable for thousands of years. Now human beings are changing that delicate balance, and no one is sure what the results will be.